Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on, YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Off Grid Knives Tracker X fixed blade, a very robust, overbuilt uh, fixed blade, and uh, something that I'm I'm very interested in. Um, uh, I believe it's Kerry from Off Grid Knives, um, and I have talked a lot, and I, I'm I'm very interested in Off Grid Knives, and I've I've very much enjoyed uh, the the items that I've handled, and uh, like the other models, he actually sent this along so that I could review it. So thank you so much. I uh, very, very much appreciate that. Um, I, it, you know, check, check them out. You know, it's, it's not just viewers, but sometimes, you know, people who um, are, are, you know, designing knives or making knives, you know, sending things uh, for review. It's because of people like them that I'm able to bring you guys content. So absolutely check them out on Instagram. Uh, check out their knives. Great, great stuff. It's also because of people like my generous patrons. Thanks so much for supporting me during this time. If you'd like to get your hands on those stickers and some other exclusive benefits, there's, of course, a link down in the description. The support would mean the world to me. I don't review a lot of fixed blades. Um, I, I intentionally seek out fixed blades that appeal to me because... Truth be told, in general, I am substantially more interested in folding knives as an enthusiast, but I do have a need for a fixed blade periodically in my in my life. You know, usually on the weekends when I'm doing things outside, if we are adding on to our house or doing something like that, a fixed blade does come in handy. Absolutely. A, a small utility knife, I think people like to jump and say, you should just use a utility knife. Sometimes I need a longer, bigger blade than just a box cutter. <laughs> so that does not do it for me. Uh, absolutely. But... Anyways, I digress to, I don't know why I'm using Nick Shabazz's uh, <laughs> dialogue. Let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. Overall length of the Tracker X coming in at nine and a half inches overall. The blade length coming in at about 4.8. Your cutting edge coming in at four, it's about 4.6. Five on the cutting edge. Let me make sure. Am I right? 4.65? Yeah, something like that. It's a big knife for sure. Not massive for a fixed blade, but definitely a big knife. Um, I'm going to do a couple of folding knife uh, size comparisons and some fixed blade comparisons. So up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. You can see there, this is big, big knife. Uh, up against the Spyderco PM2, Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Reptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue is coming in at 8 inches overall. Uh, and last but not least, for folding knives, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at 7 and a quarter inches. How about up against the other off-grid fixed blade that I have and have reviewed? Um, this is the... Um, um, Oh my gosh, am I about to forget the name of this fixed blade? The only thing that I've got that could make it look um, smaller. Oh my gosh, what is the name? I got the box over here, the off-grid, um, it's not the Rhino, the off-grid, uh, here it is, the Alpha Dog. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry about that, guys. I love the Alpha Dog. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the Alpha Dog. If you didn't watch my review of that one, uh, you can check that one out too. This is a sweet fixed blade, but because of what I like, you know, because... The Alpha Dog has what I like in a fixed blade, this big, just an, an absolutely beastly, sort of suggesting nearly indestructible uh, build quality and geometry. Uh, I like that about this knife. Um, I, I also wanted to check out the Tracker X because a lot of that is present there. So there's it up against the Alpha Dog. Um, I've also got a, a more active uh, or more knife, however you want to say that, uh, Robust. So there it is up against the Robust. And I wish I had some other fixed blades here that you guys might be aware of, but honestly, that's about it. Um, I have another one that won't fit on the table. Um, I suppose just because it's humorous, we can do that one here. <laughs> uh, this is the Ontario um, Raider Bowie, and the Raider Bowie is much bigger. So there you go. I don't know why we needed to do that, but there you go. Anybody who owns the Raider Bowie and is wondering, now you've got a size comparison. So how's the uh, action on the sky? Blah, it does. There's no action because it's a fixed blade. I got to stop making that joke. Um, the uh, I'll, let's talk about ergonomics. I guess um, this, much like the uh, Alpha Dog, has ergonomics that are are made for the human hand. Um, these are, these are textured. It's sort of a layered black and gray G10, um, and uh, there's they're contoured and thick enough that it's going to fill the hand. On a fixed blade, I don't judge it quite so 
harshly on how thick the blade is, how thick the handle material is, um, because it's not something I'm going to EDC. Some people do EDC fixed blades and carry them around. Um, so in that case, the thickness and the dimensions of the knife are certainly going to affect you in that way. This is a knife, honestly, that I, you know, would probably put in the sheath and it would come out with me with the other tools that I'm bringing out. It might be on my person. It might not. My tool belt and all the tools that I carry while I'm doing whatever it is, they weigh way more collectively and individual tools even that I carry around weigh a lot more than this knife. So in my setting where I would use the fixed blade, this doesn't weigh any more than the average tool that I might be carrying on my person at any time. So I don't really care, but it depends on, there's a lot of different reasons to carry a fixed blade. So, you know, you're going to kind of just going to have to judge it uh, based on your own personal preferences. The weight on this guy comes in at 10.44 ounces. It makes sense considering this is a big hunk of D2. By the way, this is not manufactured in the United States. Just wanted to point that out. But it does yield a pretty good price. We'll talk about that too. Um, go ahead and get a measurement. I believe this is about 180, 190, yeah. Um, so it's about a fifth of an inch thick. And I know I, the different systems, people always come down on me on that. Why are you using the different systems, you know, between the weight and measuring? I don't know. That's how I'm used to doing things. Thick blade. Not quite as thick as the Becker BK2 or the SE5, but certainly robust enough and in a, in a shape and a build that you're not going to break this. You're not going to break this knife. I mean, if you put it in a vise and beat on the end of it with a sledgehammer, maybe, but that is no measurement. That is no, that, that uh, destruction test like that yields no useful information because you're going to be using your hand and the force that you as a human being are able to actually apply to this thing while you're using it. Now, this isn't a part, I mean, this is surely not something that is covered, right? You should never pry with a knife. You should pry with a pry bar. But for those people who use fixed blades in settings where they may not have a choice, would this tool do pretty much whatever you could throw at it? Yeah, it probably will. Uh, and that's because of the enormous flat that's carried way out here. I mean, you can see how thick the tip is, how much meat there is on the blade in general. Um, this is a uh, it, it, very thick uh, blade geometry. This is not a knife that was designed to shave wax paper and you do all those little surgical, ta you know, no, this is a tool that's meant to be used hard, heavy, impact cutting, right? I mean, this is something that you could use to chop. It's something that will cut. It might not cut super efficiently, but it's backed up by a blade geometry that emphasizes strength. And that's because the idea here is that it's used for a lot of different things. This is a camp tool, right? Or perhaps, you know, if you're a soldier or something like that. Yeah, this is an outdoor tool that can be used for a lot of different things. So I think it is appropriately sized for that. Um, let's do a hardware check on this guy. We're doing things a little out of order, but that's because this is a fixed blade. Get out my handy dandy Wea magnetic driver and Wea bit selector, two items that are incredibly inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down in the Amazon store that I referenced at the beginning of every single video. Just pull open the store and look under knife maintenance. These are big fasteners. We're going to try a T15 and take a look if, and see if that fits. Are they? Yeah, I think that's actually right. Sorry, trying to get rid of shadows here so you guys can see. I think that's a T15. Well, there's a, let me go one up just to be sure, or at least what my, here's a T20. Check that out real quick. Uh, now T15 is going to do it. <laughs> I love the, I love large fasteners. I, I just, I have a fascination in general, not just for convenience, but I just like how large fasteners look, honestly, on knives. And uh, this has two fasteners on this side, two on this side, and they screw these big pieces of G10 into the um, the frame. Um, what's nice about knives like this is not only are they easy to take apart, but geez, if you wanted to, if you didn't like how the scales look and you wanted to make your own scales, I mean, I, I wouldn't imagine it would be that difficult. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, an, it's incredibly simple. I mean, it's just thick pieces of layered G10. Now what you'll lose out on unless you can texture them yourselves is the texturing. Texturing reminds me a lot of alligator scales and it absolutely does provide traction. Not so much traction that it would hurt my hand um, really quickly without using gloves. Truthfully, I probably would be using gloves in a situation where I'd be using this knife, right? But if I wasn't using gloves, is it comfortable? Yeah, and it provides traction. 
Ergonomic lines are great on this guy and the jimping is also great. It's exactly where I'd want to put my hand. There's a lot of blade and there's nothing obviously in the cutting path. I think they call this a high saber ground blade. I get those messed up a lot. So I'm sorry if I'm incorrect there, but this to me looks like a high saber ground blade. Um, but I also like the uh, how the fasteners look in contrast with the gray and black G10. I also like gray and black G10. This is all nicely knocked down. It's not sharp or anything like that. They are thick, so just keep that in mind. There's a lanyard hole back here. There's really not a lot to say here about the knife. I mean, the blade itself, it says D2. This is D2 steel, by the way. It's got Off-Grid's logo on it. It has a beautiful sort of concrete, like smooth, uh, you know, like if somebody's got like a luxury garage in their house, that smooth, almost showroom concrete. They keep in there. That's what it reminds me of. It's the same finish I've got on the Alpha Dog. This also does come in a black stone wash finish. And yes, I will be leaving links down below so where you guys can pick these up. Absolutely. Um, this blade all the way around looks great. It really does. And it, it's got great ergonomics. The sheath, we didn't really talk about the sheath, but nice Kydex sheath. Uh, clicks into place. Very solid. No play, anything like that. It's got a drainage hole. It's going to attach to your belt or whatever you attach it to very easily. Comes out uh, also very easily. I mean, whether if you just want to pop it off like that, you can do that. The retention on the, the sheath is great. I really like the knife. I, I do. And I think this would be a fantastic cutting tool. I got one issue with it the length of the handle. Now, if your hands are, um, you know, smaller than mine, and I wear an XL size glove, I, and that doesn't mean, and I say this a lot, an XL size glove does not mean you have actually XL size hands. Those of you who, you know, buy work gloves a lot, you know that. I have a, I, my hands are slightly larger than normal, They're not huge. If you got huge hands, if you got truly XL size hands, you wear a 2XL glove or higher or bigger, yeah, you're not gonna have enough room. What I enjoy uh, so much about the Alpha Dog over this one is the extra handle room. There's a little bit more handle room, and um, it just allows me to move, to choke way up or to rock back on it a little bit, and I like that. On this one, I am confined specifically to this space. It's enough room to where I can get a full purchase on it, but on a fixed blade in particular, sorry, I'm looking for the sheath of the Alpha, Alpha Dog, and I guess I threw it into the sky. I have no idea where it went. Um, in the case of this guy, you know, or in the case of fixed, blade, fixed blades in particular, I want to have a little bit more room to move around on the knife. If I'm going to do some light chopping with it, I want, I still want a full purchase. You know, you can do it, but I still want the full purchase. This is the only position where I can get a full four finger grip. If the handle was just a little bit longer, this would probably be one of my favorite fixed blades because of the aesthetic. You know, I mean, it's got a lot of usable, durable cutting edge. Um, in fact, I think the overall cutting edge on this guy is actually more. Yeah, it's got a little more cutting edge on it than the Alpha Dog, but the Alpha Dog, the Alpha Dog's got more of a handle or more handle room. I I would prefer another three quarters of an inch to an inch of handle on this guy, um, and I think it would absolutely just be phenomenal. Um, Let's see, probably not an inch, probably half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch extra handle on that guy would have just, just been like the best thing ever. Um, but that's really the only complaint I have here considering what I assume this was meant to be. Full tank construction is unquestionably durable. I have no problem with D2 in a hard use setting. It is not a, a totally stainless steel, but stainless enough. You're still gonna have to pay attention to it. If you're really getting out and getting it dirty and working hard with it, yeah, you're gonna have to clean that blade off. You're gonna have to pay attention to it. D2 is is pretty darn tough and it'll hold a reasonable edge for a while, right? I mean, I know the knife community is bored with D2, but it's a great steel for a fixed blade, absolutely. Perhaps the high carbon steels um, in some cases are a better choice but they're less stainless. So it depends on what you want from your fixed blade and where you're gonna be using it. What's the price on this guy? About 85 bucks. Honestly, I think that's a pretty fair price. I have no problem paying 85 bucks for a truly durable and well-built fixed blade. Uh, I would have been substantially more impressed with this thing if it had just a little bit of a longer handle. I, I, I don't know the design philosophy behind shortening the handle up to make it to where it's, it's just big enough to hold on to it. You know, I, I don't know. And perhaps, you know, my hands, maybe it's just my hands that just fit perfectly. You know, if your hands are a little bit smaller than mine, then maybe you can rock back on it a little bit. But I just want a little bit more handle. Um, that's not reason enough for me to not like this knife. I actually really, really like it. And I think it'll work really, really well. I think this is a, a lifelong, dependable cutting tool. I mean, obviously, this thing's a jackhammer of a fixed blade. 
seriously. I mean, this this thing is a beast. It's it's definitely ready to go. Um, so can I recommend it? Yeah, I can definitely recommend it. Um, this is going to go on my uh, fixed blades um, playlist as well as my most recommended knives playlist. Again, Kerry, thank you from Off Grid Knives for sending this to me. Really, really cool. Happy for the opportunity to check it out. But that's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do not like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this metal complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.